Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to take a look at how we go about exploiting Active Directory using LLMNR forward slash NBT dash NS poisoning. This is one of those things you have to know because it is testable if you're thinking about taking the CompTIA Pen Test Plus. And I'll try to show you a couple of things that you might see on the CompTIA Pen Test Plus exam. So here's the down and dirty for LLMNR. That stands for Link Multicast Name Resolution. And NBT-NS stands for NetBIOS Basic Input Output System Name Service. LLMNR is simply used to identify hosts within the network when DNS fails to do so. Now LLMNR has replaced nbt-ns but it is essentially the same service exploit process so anytime you look for something on the network name resolution is going to look locally on your machine first that's so that it can keep down the number of broadcast on the domain and it holds back a lot of unnecessary traffic if you've got that item already cached inside of your dns cache your netbios cache or some other cache then the machine will be able to look locally, find it much quicker, and be able to let you have access to what it is you want that much quicker. Now, if it can't find what it's looking for locally, then it's going to go out and it's going to query. It's either going to query a DNS server, and in the old days, it would have queried a Win server. But if the sender cannot find what they're looking for, using normal querying processes using DNS or WINS, then the machine will send out a broadcast asking the network, hey, who has this resource, or who has this IP address, or who has this share name? And if nobody responds, then you get back an error message saying the device or the share or whatever it was cannot be found. That's how it works. Well, if we're sitting in the middle and we're listening to the victim sending out a request, to a DNS server and there's no way that that request is going to be resolved then we can intercept that request and we can say hey I have that resource why don't you go ahead and send me your username and your password and then I'll connect you and that's exactly how this exploit works and so for this exam I've created a virtual install of Kali Linux one virtual install of Windows 10 Pro or Enterprise, one virtual install of Server 2012, Server 2016, or Server 2019. Server must be a domain controller and it must be running Active Directory. Windows 10 must be a member of the domain. So for this demonstration, I have one Windows Server 2016 virtual machine running as a domain controller. I have one Windows 10 client running as a member of that same domain. And I have Kali Linux listing running a application called Responder. To begin this lab, I've gone to my Windows 10 machine and I've created a share on the desktop. I've called it Share01. All I did was just create a folder. I named the folder Share01. I right clicked on the folder and I went to Properties. Once I was in Properties, I went to Sharing. I clicked on the sharing tab and I shared the folder. Once I did that, I went back into the sharing tab and I went to the advanced sharing options and I checked the box to share this folder. Once I'd done all that, I just closed everything out and returned to my desktop. From my server 2016 domain controller, if I was to go to search and I was to type in backslash backslash, either the name or the IP address of that Windows 10 machine and hit enter, you'll see that I pull up that share that I have just created. So the next thing we want to do is go ahead and start Responder. Now to do this, I'm going to open up a command prompt. And at the prompt, I have to go into the working directory for Responder. So to do that at the prompt, I have to type in the following cd space forward slash usr forward slash share forward slash responder that is the working directory for my responder application once i've done that i just hit enter 
Now I need to launch Responder. Now Responder is a Python application. So I have to start it with the Python command. So I've typed in Python space responder.py space dash I telling it to listen on Ethernet 0. Give it a space dash V. That's for verbosity. Now why did I do that? Because I always want to see the captured hash. There is a default behavior in Responder that if you don't type in the dash V then once the hash is captured for the first time, you won't be able to see it again because it gets stored inside of a log file. But I don't like that. I always want to see that hash every time it is captured. Now once you have everything typed in correctly, go ahead and hit enter. And Responder starts up right away. And you can go through some of the settings here and you can see exactly what it's listening for. This is the information that it's going to capture. So now if somebody was to type in the share name for share01 and they was to type it in wrong, well then it wouldn't be found. So let's go ahead and see what happens when I have responder listening and this occurs on the network. So let's go into my file explorer and I am up on my server 2016 domain controller. Let's scroll on down, let's go to network, and up here inside of the network address bar, let's just type in backslash backslash target backslash snare zero one, just like that. Hit enter, and it says Windows cannot access this share that I'm looking for on the network. I'll tell it to go ahead and diagnose it. Now if I go back on over here, to my Kali machine so you can see that responder was listening and it picked up that bogus traffic between my server and my Windows 10 machine and it responded and it took credit for that share and it said yeah I got that share I'll be glad to let you have it but first you gotta let me have your username and password and so the server 2016 domain controller says here it is so the last thing we have to do is go ahead and crack this hash. And to do that, we're going to use a couple of different utilities. And I'm going to show you why one works and why one doesn't work. Hopefully it'll make sense. So let's go ahead and just grab the entire hash like you see me doing here. And I'm just going to right click. I'm going to copy the selection. I'm going to minimize this. And over here on my desktop, you see I have a temp folder. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And you're going to see that I have a file in here where I can place this hash. It's called hash underscore victim dot text. I'm just going to go ahead and open this up with mouse pad. Now I already have a hash in here, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete that one. I'm going to select it. Delete everything in there. Then I'm going to right click inside of the box and I'm just going to paste that new hash. Now once I've done that, I'm just going to go to File and I'm going to do a Save. I'll close out my text file. You're also going to see that I have a word list called FastTrack.Text. That's the one I'm going to be using. So let's go ahead and close this out. Next, I'm going to right click on my temp folder and from my context menu, I'm going to select Open Terminal here. Now apparently there's a known issue with using Hashcat with the latest version of Kali or maybe it has something to do with the latest version of Hashcat. But regardless, it just couldn't work, and I worked on it for three days trying to get Hashcat to actually crack or decipher the hash from that server 2016 machine. Could not be done. So when I typed in the correct syntax and I hit enter, it comes back and it says token encoding exception. Well, I never could fix that encoding exception. So I worked and I worked at trying to fix that encoding exception. Now what I did notice is that on a couple of other videos that I watched, people were running Hashcat on their Windows machine. And I believe that might be the difference. I don't think Hashcat likes to run on this Kali machine, especially with this version. So I couldn't get that to work, so what I did was I just switched over to using John. Now before we get out of here, 
I mentioned earlier something about the CompTIA Pen Test Plus exam. On that exam, you might be asked, what mode does Hashcat use for deciphering a hash from a Windows domain controller? And that would be 5600 right here. As it is with everything in the universe, there's more than one way to get something done, and that includes deciphering our hash off of that Server 2016 domain controller. So I've used another tool called John, and I've typed in John space, and I've given it the file name that I want it to look at to get that hash, and I'm telling it I want you to use a word list that's inside of that work folder called fasttrack.txt. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And though we were not able to use Hashcat to decipher the hash captured from our Server 2016 machine, we were able to use John to quickly decipher the hash just as easily. And so in this short video presentation, you got to see how we can easily exploit Active Directory by taking advantage of the NetBIOS name resolution process that is normally running on a Windows machine at all times. So if you got questions, if you got concerns about anything that was shown to you in this short video presentation, please don't hesitate to reach out, contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.